Okay. Woo! Yes. Ali Makovsky, how are you? Did I say I'm, that right? Yeah, you said it perfectly. How are you? I've been good. I've been good. I've just been chilling. A lot of chilling. Yeah. So much time for chilling. And also, I love how professional you are to get me on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. So do people just DM each other for podcasts? Is that how it works in the comedy world? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I get a decent amount of DMs, whether it's like okay. from friends or just like total strangers who will DM yeah. me. I'm like, I do not know this person at all. So <laughs> I know you kind of kind of yeah i know you a little bit so when i got the email from my manager i was like whoa okay, this is <laughs> legit it's hard to say no when yeah. <laughs> you took all the correct steps to get a hold of me oh yeah i figured that'd probably be the best like i don't know at least with like bands like everything gets done through management it's like bands yeah. don't want to do anything because then you start pissing people off and well and i feel like with bands there's other people involved in the band and so yeah. it makes it a lot easier to just have like one point of contact instead of like the drummer said yes the bass player said no <laughs> the singer yeah. yeah whatever yeah it's definitely made it a lot easier so i did i wanted to go through the proper channels but i wasn't I sure if it. that was like commonplace on your yeah on did your you night. get that did you get that through my website yeah i love that <laughs> that's why yeah. i have that there because i'm like if you really need to get a hold of me, don't yeah. DM me. Like, don't go in the unrequested DMs. Give it to my. <laughs> and also, it's I kind of do it because I want people to email my manager so my manager knows like people are trying to talk to me. Yeah, that's also like I've been emailing people's PR agents too, like my friends who have had albums coming out. I was yeah. Like, now they look busy. Yeah, totally. It's like you're it's you're paying great. this this retainer for PR and and it's they're working they're they're working for you yeah give yeah. them a job to do <laughs> where do you um, live I I met you when I was on the road but I'm forget wait hold on I kind of want to remember this no nope, I'm not gonna remember you can just say it I'm in uh Santa Barbara that's right because yeah. I remember it wasn't that far away but the show was more up north right we were in St. Louis Wait, why? Oh, because you were doing a show. I was That's also on right. tour. And yeah. I love that you went through my manager because um, one of the guys was like, oh, my God, they performed at like this house show I did at UCSB. Oh, really? Yeah. So he was like, That's so crazy. So, I mean, oh my God. we both look very cool right now. Yeah. <laughs> Which is super oh, so, important. So, so one of your managers went to UCSB. I guess so and saw me there must have been in the early 2010s wow yeah you've been around for a while uh, you could say that yeah yeah but them that's crazy well i'm yeah. only i'm only uh i'm only 30 so oh. we started the band kind of young like yeah at 20 so and everyone's still cool with each other uh, i have new members now but yeah we are we're all so cool it's just oh. everyone got older and like how long can you play rock band for you know totally yeah i have a friend I who's in a band and it seems that's it's it's interesting because it's kind of like one of those things that i like envy but at the same time don't envy it's like a what's the same what's the term about the coins and uh two sides of the same coin too well oh, yeah, i don't yeah. even know if that applies to this but pretty much like i'm always envious of people who are in bands because i'm like if you get to have a show and it's like an amazing show you guys all fucking rocked out mm -hmm. and you guys all get to like celebrate together and be like we're so great i love you i love you i love you it's like a team yeah. effort but then if you guys if someone sucks like if the drummer's just like blowing it yeah like everyone like low key is just like why are you in the band <laughs> and that's actually the most important part is the drummer because if your drummer sucks like the, it's gonna ruin everyone else yeah yeah i yeah i wish i was in a band do you think uh like after a stand-up set like do you just hang out by yourself especially if you're on the road like in st louis did you just go back to your hotel that night and just go to bed i mean I don't exactly remember. I feel like whenever I go on the road, because Santino, Andrew Santino was headlining. Mm -hmm. So whenever I'm just like featuring for someone on the road, I typically just like follow whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. And Andrew, I feel like 
maybe the first two nights Andrew likes to like go out to like a bar or a restaurant or something. So it's fun, like whether it's a good show or a bad show, like it's fun to just like go out and like, you know, hang out, have fun, meet the yeah. locals, whatever. Yeah. But it is just different because like he could have a really good set and maybe I have like a really bad set. And then I'm just like in a bummed mood and he's like thrilled. <laughs> but with a band, everyone's kind of on the same page. Yeah, yeah. If you fuck up at, at uh, Soundcheck, you're kind of like, okay. Like, everyone's on edge. It's like, we all know we need to, like, step it up for the actual performance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but the I difference feel like... is... Oh, sorry. I was just saying, the difference, you guys are there, like, all weekend, right? You you must have been at that city all weekend. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's definitely time to, like, chill, figure out what you want to do. Some cities, there's, like, more to do at night than others, or, like, depending on where the club's at and stuff. But... Mm -hmm. I was talking to my friend the other day who's in a band and it's funny because like I feel like when you're in a band when you're touring you're just like non-stop and unless yeah. you're like putting out a special or touring for a reason with comedy it's like you're just kind of doing like random like you might have like two weekends in a row of shows or maybe it's like one weekend and then three weekends off and then like mm. another weekend on the road um, but I think it would be so fun to just have like one long world or not world. I mean, <laughs> that'd be sick too, but like that one would be sick, long yeah. like US run. Yeah, it kind of breaks down to like two times a year, you're out for like five weeks in a row, like every day. Yeah. And then that's like, oh, but for comedians, it's kind of like every weekend, right? Yeah. And then you're back home by Monday. Back home. I can't tell what would be more exhausting. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's almost nice to do it in like a chunk of time that way your brain is just like in show mode and you're like True. nonstop. and that way like if you do fuck up at the beginning of the tour then you're like tweaking it constantly oh yeah but you when get you're really like, good towards the end yeah yeah but then yeah. if you're going like back and forth you're like okay now i gotta get back into it and then you're like okay i gotta get back into yeah, it yeah i also like the like road stories and i think that that happens more so when you're like on the road non-stop because you get so like there you go kind of crazy yeah I, i'm just pretending like i know what i'm talking about i'm like i've been no, in like yeah. five bands but i like imagine <laughs> you get like crazy or like you know so much can go wrong when you're like going across on a tour and so totally. it's like that kind of makes it so much fun once you do have that time to like rest and regroup well, if you, if you can survive the crazy moment, then it's, like, fun to look back on and just, like, laugh at. Yeah. But it's, like, in the moment, it's, like, sleeping in my van in, like, 100-degree weather in Florida wasn't fun. But, like, I can say it now and get a good laugh out of it. Like, yeah. Oh, shit. I got at to have – I've always dreamed of having, like, a tour bus moment. Oh, yeah. Me too. You know, like, so, yeah. I think because I grew up in the time of, like – Hannah Montana, Jonas Brothers, Justin Bieber, they all had those like um, concert movies. So you could like yeah. watch them on the tour bus. And I was like, I want to sleep in like a little cubby. Like that sounds amazing. Yeah, my equivalent was in sync. I had an in sync VHS of them on tour. Did you watch that one um, uh, YouTube premium documentary that Lance Ooh. Bass created? And it oh. talks about their manager and how like mm. fucked up he was and weird and like yeah lou happy. perlman yes yeah i had I didn't no watch idea it, but i know i knew i know all about that it's so good and i forgot to cancel my youtube premium subscription so now i'm just gonna like watch it five more times i guess <laughs> that was like my favorite group that was like the first concert i ever went to yeah i i i think i was like just too A young little, yeah. to be like super into it but my sisters are seven and five years older than me, so I kind of got like the residual fandom from them. Yes. And we were definitely an in sync house for sure. Yeah, in sync over Backstreet Boys. But I that's got the, off. Oh. But that's the crazy thing about that documentary is you realize like Lou Perlman created the beef between the two of them. The They're essentially the same band. Yeah. Ugh. It's crazy. Um. I also got an offer to see the Spice Girls when I was a kid. My sister went and I declined. Wow. Big regret. I know. I know. That's probably my big regret looking back on all the concerts I could have gone to. Yeah. I also feel like I wasn't too heavily into the Spice Girls fandom, but. Yeah. It's, so yours must have been like, yeah, like you said, Hannah Montana. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. But I, my friends, um, my friends were doing like a U.S. tour in a van, mm. and they were going to be in. It was like at the very end of their tour. Uh, they were doing San Francisco and then L.A. the next night. Mm-hmm. And I was going to go to the L.A. show and they were like, why don't you just they didn't because they're from Australia. So they didn't realize how far San Francisco is to L.A. So they're like, why oh, don't yeah. you just go to San Francisco and L.A.? And I was like, yeah, can I like go on your bus? Yeah. Like can they go on the tour bus. And they're like, yeah, of course. So I like looked up flights to see how much it would be to go to San Francisco. It was like 40 bucks one way. Mm. So I flew to San Francisco day of went to the show, got to sleep in the bus, oh, and nice. then went back to LA with them the next day. And it was the coolest experience. Oh, that's awesome. Except I'm so you, can't, you can't poop on the bus. Yeah, that's a problem for me, man. That's that's like the thing with touring is that I need to, I need the shit and I need a shower. That's like my only two things, like. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I like a nice hotel. Airbnbs made this whole touring thing like a hundred times easier. Like, it's awesome. Airbnbs are nice. I do love hotels though. Oh yeah. I've always loved hotels. I think there's something, I like the artificial feeling of like not being home, but like an environment that's supposed to be like relaxing, but it's so just like sterile and like (laughs) there's no character to it. I just, I love it. Do you crank the AC the whole time? I I feel like it ruins my sinuses. Ooh. I like a chilled room, but not too cold, because then my nose gets all runny and I feel weird. Uh, yeah, the rest of the band hates it, but I leave that thing running all night. Yeah. And then I'll find the spot of the bed closest to the AC. Whoa. So you're like I dedicated to central air. Ooh, I love it. Yeah. I keep mine at my house at like 77, which is oh, pretty nice. cold. It sounds hot, but... That sounds kind of hot. Is, no, it's very cold. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know if you can hear me, but my yeah, roommate, I can hear you. Okay, my I'm in my room. My roommates yeah, are here, yeah. so I have to. My roommates will turn it down to like 74, 73, and it's way too cold. It's like yeah. the Arctic. So <laughs> anyway, it's com- I mean, I get it. It's complicated. Everyone has a different stance on it. It's very yeah, political. Everyone's- Oh, yeah, especially my bass player just loves everything hot. He loves the heat. And I don't know, like, I kind of got like that when I was living in Los Angeles. I got used to the heat because it's like a dry heat. But I just, I can't, I fucking hate the heat now. I'm such a baby. I'm a mix. I like yeah. when I get on a hot day when I get in my car and it's really warm in there. I like yeah. let myself just sit. In the sauna? Yes. The free sauna. And then, yeah. and then eventually I'll roll the windows down and turn the AC up. But I like that initial, <laughs> like... Or not when it's hot outside, but like when you're kind of cold and then you get into like a super hot car and it's just mm-hmm. like, I feel like a baby. <laughs> um, are you, well, without having to say what area of Los Angeles, you don't have to say where you live. I'm in Hollywood. Area. Oh, Hollywood. Cool. Yeah. Like Thai li- town. Ooh. How do you like it? I love it. I mean, it's the only place I've lived since I moved here, but I didn't mm-hmm. move that far because I'm from Long Beach. So it wasn't like a huge journey to LA to follow my dreams. It was just like yeah. <laughs> one stop on the freeway. Um, yeah, totally. So all my family's close, but yeah, I just, my friend was living in this house and I had been to a party here and I was like, this house is so cool. Like, I can't believe you live here. And because I hadn't been around LA that much or like gone to people's houses and like, I feel like everyone just has an apartment and mm-hmm. there's like five people in a two bedroom. And so this is like the first house I had been to. And I'm like, this is so cool. You're like living the dream. And then eventually a room opened up here and I moved in and I've been here ever since. That's awesome. Do you think moving to LA like helped your career? Mm. I don't know because I was always yeah. like coming up here. I think it just was like easier in terms of transportation because I would drive up every night to do open mics and mm. I'd leave around like two in the morning, two thirty three, and I'd just be so tired on the freeway going to Long yeah. Beach. And especially just like being at my parents' house, like I'm glad I got to do it for a little bit, but I was just so over it and was like, I want to be nearby. 
totally because that's always like the uh the battle that goes on in your head like oh if i'm going to be in a band i should be living in la like i should be living in new york san francisco like a bigger city than san yeah. harbor you know yeah. but when i finally did it i didn't i was like oh i don't know it didn't it just didn't make sense yeah well and santa yeah. barbara's so close to everything it's i mean it's yeah. far but it's not that far yeah it's like an hour and a half I get yeah like if something were to come up last minute like it's very possible for you to make it yeah i'll just make that little drive go play the show and then head back home i guess yeah where are you from originally i'm from here born and raised oh yeah, is it katie my... perry from there she <laughs> yes she is i love I that saw... i saw her once <gasps> where what was she doing tell me everything uh, I was working in the city parking lots. I was taking the tickets. Okay, and cool. And she drove out of my lot, and she looked at me like, "You know who I am." Yeah. Let's let's get a let's get a good deal and or yeah. free. And then I looked at her. I said, "It's gonna be a dollar fifty. She gave me a dollar fifty. It was awesome. Exact change. Exact change. And wow. there's a very skinny leg next to her, which tells this is Russell Brand era. It had to have been him. Whoa. Yeah. <coughs> I love Russell Brand. I love Katy Perry. <laughs> I love all yeah. things pop culture. Ooh, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it was him. I saw a very skinny leg next to her in some car that I'd never seen before. I was like, yeah, this is tight. That's Katy Perry for sure. I love Katy Perry. Saw Toby Maguire in that same parking lot. Okay. And Carson Daly. Okay. We're getting worse on the celebrity list. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you mentioned it, just in case I was a big Carson Daly fan. You never know. I was. And then yeah. I tweeted him and he followed me back on Twitter <gasps> and to oh. this day follows me on Twitter. Wow. He's loyal. You know what? I, I'd give it up for him. You know what? He, you he's know, a good for guy. me, 90s kid TRL was big for me. Yeah. Hell oh, yeah. yeah. It's crazy to think like he was so big and then like, I mean, he's still doing all right. He's he was always like always 30 though like always like yeah know. i yes exactly yeah it's weird ah <laughs> oh, man yeah other than that like it's been chill it's kind of been like you know i started this podcast uh did you do this in quarantine like right before oh nice like right in january so i have a couple in person and then now the rest of them have just been this yeah uh been writing songs I did like one live stream on Instagram, but like it didn't feel it felt OK. I don't know. Yeah, the online shows are weird. Like it's fun in the moment. And then after you're like, this is not the same feeling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not. And it's, I it's... feel like with live shows, there can be like really high highs and really low lows. And with like online shows, it's like no highs and just like kind of flat whining in some lows. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's what's yeah. I don't know. I think for comedians, it's even harder because it's like music. You, at least you can do the live stream music thing and it's kind of accepted and people kind of like it. But to do jokes on the live stream, it's hell no. That's even like with watching like comedy specials. If you're not with a bunch of people watching it, like it's just not as funny. Like it's really hard to make it, um, you know, like accessible to be like a laugh out loud comedy special. Yeah. I saw uh, Tom Segura when he came to Santa Barbara. Love him. H hilarious. I was dying. And then his special came out and my friend texted me. Yeah. Wasn't as good as his last one. I was like, I was dying in person. It was the same jokes. Like it's. Yeah. It's just hard. It's hard to it's like hard. make that connection, especially if it's just you watching it. Cause you're just kind of thinking and it's, I feel like with comedy, it's so much about the like energy of the people around you because it's true. Mm -hmm. Like laughter is contagious. So when you hear someone else laugh, you're like, ha ha ha, that was funny. Yeah, totally. But yeah, like when whenever something, whenever you lose the live audience in real time, it just it's not the same. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. But that's I still another. Like it. Yeah, that's another thing I envy about music is like if you're performing a show, people can be like talking and, you know, like enjoying themselves, but like kind of having like a conversation, but be jamming always... out. And it doesn't matter. It's like you're, you're still always having louder. a good time. Yeah. But with comedy, <laughs> yeah. it's like if people are talking, you're like, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> like you that's can true. hear everything. Like you need undivided attention. And it, yeah, it's, it'd be nice to have it so people could like, 
casually enjoy comedy, but that's just not how it's consumed. <laughs> um, when was the first time you went to the store? Like, how old were you when the first time you went to the comedy store? I think, so I remember for my birthday, I think it was maybe my, like, 17th birthday. Oh. Or maybe it was my 18th birthday. I don't remember, but it must have been my 17th birthday. My sister took me on a TMZ tour because, like I said, pop culture, I love yes. it. And so we went on this TMZ tour, and they drove by the comedy store, and I'm like, what the fuck is that place? Like, we drove by the Laugh Factory first, and, like, the Laugh Factory posts so many YouTube videos of comedians that I just, like, knew about the Laugh Factory. Yeah. And then we drove by the comedy store, and I'm like, what's this, like, knockoff comedy place? Like, do they sell whoopee cushions here? Because it's called the comedy <laughs> store. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, this is going to be corny. And my sister was like, no, this is, like, a really good, like, comedy place. Mm. And I was like, okay, whatever. And uh, and so then my sister, one of my other sister was uh, interning at Conan for his show. Mm -hmm. And another intern there, or someone who worked there, was a stand-up comedian. His name's Brent Morin. And my sister just was like, he, she messaged him being like, hey, my sister wants to do comedy. Like, is there any way she can go to the comedy store? And so he put me on a list. I'm like, 17 or 18 i'm not allowed in there at all yeah and so i went and that was my first time watching a show there and it was just like super cool like the energy was so different than like the laugh factory because everyone's hanging out i'm like hearing comedians have conversations in the hallway and i'm just like whoa like this is crazy it was so yeah. cool and then once i started doing comedy um i just started year, going to the open mic there what year was that when did you start i think I want to say 2015. Cool. Yeah. I That's think. Awesome. Yeah. And they have like an open mic. What? I don't really know how to get it. Like, is there an open mic and you could just sign up and. Yeah. So, so when I first started, um, I used this website called the comedy bureau.com and it just had a list of like every single open mic in LA and like what time it was at, if you needed to pay to perform, if it was like first come first serve or a random lottery. Um, and it had like all the information. So I would just like, I would like look up where every location was and every time and how it was ran. And I would like organize my entire night to fit as many as I could in. Yeah. And so I just did that. And then the comedy store has always had this open mic on Mondays. And so I just started going to that. And then they had this uh, live show and podcast on Mondays called Kill Tony. So I started yeah. signing up for that and then eventually became a regular on that. And that's kind of like how I really got like, um, connected with the comedy store and like kind of made made my way around there. That's awesome. But yeah, I was way too young to be there and got kicked out. <laughs> That's awesome. They like um, finally found out that I was underage when I was 20. And then they're like, now you have to wait a year to come in. And I'm like, but I've oh, been no. here the whole time. Oh no. Yeah. That must have sucked. It sucked. So I would like, so I'd like go do my open mics or do a show. And then I'd like, on my way home, stop by the comedy store and hang out on the sidewalk because I wasn't yeah, allowed. Yeah. That's awesome. But people like knew you, so it's like you could see someone and be friends. And... Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it was fun. Um, I worked at this one club in Santa Barbara called Vin uh, Velvet Jones. Mm. And, and Red Band and Tripoli would do a night there. And uh, wait, I, Sam Tripoli was the first person to ever take me somewhere out of LA to perform. Really? Yeah, and, th and it was in Santa Barbara. Oh, maybe it was Velvet Jones. It was probably Velvet Jones. It probably was. It was yeah. so bad. <laughs> yeah. No one was there. Yes. Yeah. Be because I was working in the marketing for that venue. Yes. And then uh, it'd be like two nights before I'd get like an email. Hey, this is happening on Thursday. I'm like, what? Yeah. It's like literally zero time to promote it. So that's why those shows never went well. We didn't have enough like – lead time to get posters made to like do the whole bit yeah but i remember yeah, it, was, it was so cool like because it was my first time so i was just like this is the coolest thing ever that's funny yeah that's how i i uh i don't know them because it was just like just seeing them and i didn't really talk to them but like i remember seeing them there first and then i saw them at the comedy store i was like oh yeah wow, those those guys are actual comedians i thought they were yeah. just random guys who played in santa barbara for no one that's so funny yeah 
that's cool. It's great. It's it's been cool to kind of see uh, Sam Tripoli's like uh, rise. I see. Wait, and then how did you that. find out about me? Uh, Christina posted about you. Christina Pajitsky. Yeah, she put. Po- oh yeah, she's so she- cool. I love her. Yeah, I love I love that whole YMH crew. I met them at uh, uh, Tom's like instant family showing in Thousand Oaks. Oh, what's that? It was like that movie he did with Mark Wahlberg. He had like a, a show and showing, and I went and saw them there. Oh, sick! It was cool. It was fun. But yeah, she posted about you, and I was like, oh, let me check who this out is, and then yeah. And then here we are. Here we are. I was just you know, when you're on tour like in a band like sometimes the last thing you want to fucking hear is music so it's like yeah. that's when you kind of get in the podcasts and comedians and yeah it's been yeah amazing. i feel like i feel like since doing comedy the longer i do comedy the more i become friends with musicians <laughs> yeah. i think there's a part of us that like wants to swap lives and vice versa yeah yeah that was definitely something I like wanted to do uh, when I was younger. It was either like be in a band or try and do comedy, but there's no scene. There's not really a scene here in Santa Barbara. Like, so yeah, went and did music I, instead. Yeah. I, I always knew that I wanted to do something where I could like entertain people. Yeah. And I wanted to be a singer and my mom yeah. was like, my mom was like, well, you're no Mariah Carey or Ariana Grande. <laughs> so then I was like, Okay, I guess I'll just do comedy. <laughs> There's there you have to be the best or that's yeah. It. yeah. But I and for some reason I was like, well, comedy will be pretty easy. And then I started doing it and I was like, this is not easy. Oh, but no. it is super fun. I'm I'm glad that I made the choice of doing comedy. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh what are some of the city have you gone all over the United States? Have you gone outside of not the yet? I've only traveled um, throughout the U.S. like when I've opened or like featured for other yeah. comedians. And then um, I just started headlining my own shows like right before COVID. But then I had cool. to cancel the rest of them, which is a bummer. But yeah. yeah, I feel like I've been to a good amount of places. I I go to Arizona a lot. I feel mm. like I've been to St. like Missouri like two or three times now for some reason. I don't yeah. know why that's like the hot spot for me, but I've been there quite a bit. Um, Where in Arizona? Uh, I I really like the Tempe Improv. I've performed oh, yeah. there a bunch. Yeah. Nice. And the guy who runs that club is the best. I played the worst show in Tempe, Arizona. Really? Yeah. It was br- it was Super Bowl Sunday. So there was just fucking no one. So I was like, all right, that this sucks. is brutal. Yeah, this is brutal. That's like something I didn't realize like growing up in California. I booked a tour uh last year like from January to March and I was like it should be beautiful. It's beautiful in Santa Barbara in in February and Yeah. I I I, I slowly learned no, it fucking sucks everywhere else. Yeah. Like we passed Chicago and we got into Minnesota and I was like this is brutal. Fuck this. Yeah. It's yeah. so cold. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, Tempe, St. Louis. That was my first time actually in St. Louis. Uh, and I was glad I got to see your your set. It was so good. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so what's next um, for you? Like, you've been doing your podcast. I've been listening to that. Yeah, so I've been doing my podcast, which has been nice to like have something to do during the quarantine. So I do that every every week it's called resting bitch and i mostly just do it by myself but uh i'm trying to get more guests on for the future um so yeah i have some exciting guests coming on soon so i've been doing that and then i made and designed like my own t-shirts and i'm doing like a small limited release and i'm super excited about them because they're so cute and it's like the first thing i've ever made and like put out for people to buy um yeah and then we'll just see i'm excited for i'm doing like a drive-in movie type of comedy show oh in back in arizona actually (laughs) Yes. Um, in September. So that'll be interesting to try and oh. do. And then is that, the drive-in show, is that opening or is that headlining or? 
I think, well, I don't think it's like a headliner type of show. There's like oh. this one guy hosting, Mike Turner, who's really funny. And then I think it's like me, Chappelle Lacey, and someone else who I'm blanking on, all just like doing probably the same amount of time for sets. Or maybe it is. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I'm just going to show up, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. With your uh, podcast, like. Oh, Chappelle, had- Chappelle Lacey's headlining. Okay. I oh, just checked cool. the flyer. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be super fun that's awesome and then with your podcast like yeah i noticed it was just you and you're and you're interested in getting more guests like was the idea to just do it solo like first or yeah i kind of wanted it to be like almost like a diary where i would just like keep people updated on you know my life and doing comedy and kind of being in the beginning of like you know headlining and stuff mm-hmm. and what that's like and um you know every once in a while i'd have a guest on just if i wanted to talk to one of my friends and i had my dad on like that was great and then i've had chefs on and i just get like whoever i feel like talking to yeah um but now that it's COVID, i don't really have much new you know (laughs) events to report and so i'm like okay i think this is a good time to have the guest portion of the show that's how I was uh, when I first started this. I was like, oh, like I like how Mark Marin does like a big intro. So I'll have an intro. And then I realized I don't have anything to fucking say. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, yeah. So I, I cut the intro. Now I just do the interview. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I love that Maddie Matheson episode, actually. I thought you did a great job. I love Maddie so much. I, I got his cookbook somewhere. Or I can't, I can't it's somewhere in my room, though. Yeah. He's the best. He's so cool. That's awesome. I like I was like internet friends with him and like Mm. was obsessed. I thought like as soon as I found out who he was and started following him, I'm like, this is the coolest dude ever. Yeah. He seems like the coolest dude. Yeah. And then we met in person and we just became friends and I'm like, he's so funny and cool. Uh, Did he he cook for you? No. Ah, I've been wanting to try some of his food. It always looks not yet. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, but maybe that's one awesome. day soon. Yeah. That, that's cool. Well, uh, so what's, can you give us a sneak peek of this merch? Like, what are we looking at here? It's top secret, but Ooh. I think, I don't know when this podcast is coming out. Uh, on the next month. Okay. Well then it'll be out by then, but it'll okay. probably be sold out. Oh, okay. So, you know, sorry. Sorry you guys that's are late, a- but... <laughs> I'm sure I'll make more at some point. I just wanted to see how this does and get a feel for if people who are even interested in wearing something. That's awesome. T-shirts, hoodies, what is like... Just T-shirts. Okay. There's a black color. There's a white color. It's Ooh. really cute. I got one when they gave me the box of merch. They like had one for me to like, you know, test and make sure I liked it and stuff. Yeah. And I put it on as soon as I got it, and I was like this came out so much better than I expect. Like I was nervous. It would be like kind of corny or cheesy or like yeah. just dumb. And as soon as I put it on, I was like, this is perfect. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a definitely a fear of like doing merch. It's like, they're like, Oh, you could do it in this shirt style or this shirt. It's like, I don't, I just want the one that feels good. Yeah. Like, what's the nice feeling shirt. Yes. Uh, yes. That's what I said because I hate like stiff, like starchy, High streetwear shirts, yeah. And so yes. I was like, I was like, I'll pay extra. I need to have a soft shirt. I'm not trying to sell stiff shirts to my fans. Yeah. Do you have a lot of? Do you feel like you've had a lot of male fans or female fans? Um, based on my Instagram, at least it's more dudes. Yeah. Um, but I think it's probably also because, uh, you know, going on the road with like male headliners i think a lot of their fans um have just found me through that cool um so yeah i was gonna say you can get most most guys will wear fucking anything so it wouldn't really matter yeah 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 um but the one that i've been wearing that i got is like a tester i've been Mm -hmm. wearing it like pretty much every day yeah. Wearing it to bed, wearing it when I'm out, like I wear it all the time. So the one, that one, I'm selling for a higher price. Ooh, that's gonna be like the special alleys. My armpits are gonna be like stained <laughs> yeah. into the shirt. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, merch, merch can be uh 
can be scary just because you want to make good merch and i'm always jealous of other people's merch i know everyone's so good at designing stuff and i've never done anything like that so i was like nervous but i'm really i'm really happy with it when you say you designed it like what did you draw can you draw are you artists an artist like that? no i think it's more of like a visual design cool. it's definitely not like that but i was at my mom's house at the beginning of lockdown and i was bored and i was like how can i make money like how can i just like do something for people to like you know have a part of me with them while i'm not out touring and mm -hmm. so i kind of uh without giving too much away i used some things from around the house to make this design mm. and then my buddy i took a picture of it how i wanted it to be and he just photoshopped each piece that i put together and photoshopped it onto oh, a shirt. that's awesome yeah. and so it's yeah it's my own creation Ooh. the first the first of many shirts and let's see how this goes i think so i, I now that now that this is going to be done soon i'm like I'm already like, I want, I want to make more. Yeah. Are you doing your merch with like a, a company or are you, are you going to, will Allie be sh shipping this shit herself? Personally, my hands, my hands oh, to damn. your chest. Yeah. Ooh. I'm nervous That's about that. I'm like, I don't know how capable I am of mailing things, but hopefully yeah. it's not too bad. I, I want people to get them quickly. So I hope it doesn't take too long to ship. I'm terrible at it. We'll see. I Luckily, I have friends who I can just like bribe with food and maybe money. Yeah. I'd be like, please help me ship this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm useless. Damn. Yeah. Merch. Uh, merch is a big part of like any uh, artist's life. And that was like definitely something I've been thinking about in this quarantine. Like, oh, I should like get the Dante Elefante store going. Like, I think I need to be like an online business now. Like, yes. Ah, yeah. I know, but I'm also stressed. I'm like, does that mean I have to like do taxes as like a t-shirt business? Yeah, what does that mean? I don't know. I'm so bad with all of that stuff. Do I have to do, do I have to do taxes at all next year? I didn't work at all. Are you on unemployment? Yeah. Do you know that you have to pay taxes on unemployment next year? Oh shit. Isn't that fucked? That is fucked. Yeah, That's I'm like, not okay. Well then that I'm screwed. I don't know. I know. <laughs> I know. We're all fucked. Yeah. I played a show New Year's Eve. That was the last show I did. And uh, I don't know, man. I guess I'll have to pay taxes on that. I guess. I don't know. New Year's Eve shows. I don't know if that counts as last year or this year. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. doesn't the year start for taxes in like April? Oh, okay. Then that makes that easier. Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't know. I'm. I'm. Are you nervous to get back into the clubs if it if and when it opens? No, I'm ready. I'm yeah. ready. I like started skateboarding during quarantine. I'm like, I don't even know who I am anymore. Oh yeah, I wanted to ask you about the skateboarding. How's how's it going? It's going. I don't. I mean, I'm not going pro or anything, but <laughs> it's been really fun. Like it's you really. Got the challenging. ollie. I got the ollie down next to the shove it, and then next thing you know, I'll be kick flipping around town. But, um, yeah, it's been fun. It's just nice to have, like, something to do outside mm -hmm. and to be active and to, like, mm -hmm. try and work on something. And, it's, yeah, it's been fun. And I really like the people who I skate with. So That's I enjoy cool. it. That's cool. Yeah, skating. Uh, I'm just impressed by people who could just stand on the board and just <laughs> regular skate. I'm like, oh, damn. Yeah, I was getting, I was posting videos and I was getting so much feedback from strangers being like, you have to do this, you have to do that. And I'm like, uh, I know what I need to do. I can't do it. And also, I don't see you skating, you know, yeah, like, yeah. like if you do the trick, sure. But I'm also like at the park with people who know what they're doing. So I'm getting good feedback. I wonder if that's like, I don't know, is that patriarchy? I have no idea. Someone was like, these dudes just want a reason to talk to you. Let them shoot their Pro shot. Yeah, that's probably. But that's it probably does feel reason. it does feel very like patronizing. Where it's yeah. like, do this. Like, you just have to commit. I'm like, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Because I don't, I don't think anyone like, like no, very rarely does a guy come up to me after a show and be like, oh, what kind of pedals are you using, dude? Like, oh, sick. But like when I see my friends who are, female in, in in bands it's always like oh that's a sick guitar like they're just like looking for a reason 
Yeah. It's like, I don't know. Yeah. I have to just give people the benefit of the doubt and not assume. I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. I'm like, I'm doing it whether (laughs) someone even followed up. I posted a video of me landing the Ollie. And this is like a stranger. Like, I don't have DMs with them. I was just reading my unread DMs. Yeah. And this guy was like, oh, I see you took my advice. Like, you really... (laughs) pop the tail on that one and i'm like i've just been practicing i wasn't like what did that one guy say like duck dynasty one two three four x i think he mentioned something but it's nice i mean it's nice that people care at all and yeah we want to see you succeed in your journey yeah yeah so it's been fun i can't wait to just shred yeah that'd be nice i can't imagine what a grind it feels like like grinding a rail yeah it looks so cool. I can't even only imagine. It's all so scary. Yeah. And you've been putting up on TikTok. Are you, are you, are, do you have fears over TikTok? Going no, away? I don't care. I'm honestly, I hope it goes away because that's just yeah. one less thing I need to check. It's, that's been like my one place where I'm like, oh, there's not really a lot of bullshit politics. And I get so like, str- I can go to TikTok and just see, you know, the it's gush. a time suck though. I feel like when I go oh, yeah. on there, I'm like, what day is it? Yeah. Yeah, where am I? It's a casino. <laughs> I saw a TikTok of a guy in a casino uh smoking with his mask on. I've seen that, yeah. You know what? Insane. I love that guy. Power to him. <laughs> we have a casino pretty close to Santa Barbara that's open and I have I have yet to go. I love casinos. I love anywhere where people are like just kind of like wasting their life away. Like I'm super into like lake and river people. Oh like, yeah. Live by the lake and just like drink beer and have like long <laughs> acrylic nails and leather skin. Like that's my dream. Ooh. Are you a beach person? Mm. Yeah, a little bit, but I really like lakes and rivers. Yeah. Where do we get that here? Where can we go? You gotta go Where to like Arizona. Go? Yeah. Damn. But there's Kern River, which isn't too far. Okay. I went there when I was young. I haven't gone as an adult, but I there are like spots around. I just I never am like the type of person who just like goes and does that on my own. Yeah. I only do it if there's like people who know what they're doing who take me along with them. I get kind of dragged out to like hikes and stuff. I I really feel inspired to go on like a hike or anything like that. Yeah. 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 I have to make a plan to go on a hike or else I'm not going to go. I have to be told like ahead of time if they want to go to the beach. Like I can't, you know, very rare do I find like the motivation that, oh, let's go to the beach today. Yeah. Like I, uh, my girlfriend and I went to the beach uh, 4th of July weekend. She was like, I feel like we did this. And then she looked on her phone. It was literally two years ago. I was like, yeah, I guess two years is kind of like every two years. I feel like going to the beach. But other than that. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy because we live so close to the beach. I know. I really, I live very close. Like seagulls fly around my house. I've, I've gone more though during lockdown. It's been really nice. Yeah. I've, uh, I have noticed it's been like pretty nice and, and I went downtown, uh, last weekend. It was mostly people not from Santa Barbara in Santa Barbara. I was like, yeah, yeah, I see. And no one's wearing a mask. It's like, okay. And then I tried to leave on Sunday because I went to L.A. on Sunday and it was just like back to back traffic. I'm like, OK, I know it's crazy. Everyone's out and about. Ah, I know. It feels all right, though. I'm excited. I don't know when I'll be playing shows again, but uh, I'm definitely I'll, I think I'm definitely ready to start playing again. It was. Really yeah. Fun. Yeah. I don't know. Touring, though. I don't know when I'll want to tour again, though. I know. It's really weird to think about. Yeah. It'll just be nice when things can kind of start up in terms of entertainment. Totally. I want to go to concerts. I want to go. Yeah. I miss out on that. I know. And festivals. Festivals. Yeah. When is a festival going to come back? I have no idea. Have you done Coachella? Have you gone to any of those? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I love Coachella. Well, not as much anymore, but... I just like being around people and like having a shared experience. Who'd you go see? Who, who was there? I've been a couple of years. Um, I saw the 1975 before they were like 
the big rock stars they are now and that was yeah. really cool um and i've seen them since and it's it's really fun to be able to like watch a band's progression with like live shows um and they've mm -hmm. just gotten like so, there's like i went to see them not too like in december like around last christmas at um k-rock's almost acoustic christmas and they oh, were wow. so good that's awesome so i have videos from it and it's just like me screaming at the top of my lungs the whole time are you the person who likes to meet the band after the show um if i can of course yeah, yeah. <laughs> Duh, i'm not i'm bus. not yeah i'm not leaving after i'm like trying yeah. to find all the es escape routes <laughs> any like i'm like what food is nearby here where they might stop at i'm a stalker yeah that's I'm true i'm dedicated yeah i like I, I like that energy i like when people come to the merch booth and just talk they don't buy anything they just talk because they yeah. want to talk to the band like, but i feel like i, I don't go to too many like small independent shows so i don't yeah. i mean in my head i'm like the person who hangs after but like if you're going to k-rock's almost acoustic christmas and the 1975 <laughs> are performing you're not meeting them after there's no chance that's true that's true but i always have the delusional mindset that i'm going to be in the crowd having a great time Maddie Healy's gonna see me and be like, "You're the best fan we have. Um, <laughs> we want you to come on the road with us and just be in the audience for every show." Yeah, yeah, like that'd be your role. In my head, I'm like, audience. "Yeah, yeah, that's all I need." In my head, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, "That seems very reasonable." Maybe sing backups. Oh my god! I mean, I don't want to push it, but <laughs> I'll start with the audience. Let's not even push the fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm that same way with comedy where I like, you know, and that's what I like about the comedy stores. You see them walking around. You're like, oh, my God, that's so and so. Yeah, oh. it's so fun. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't know. It's so cool, though. Um, what else was I going to ask you about TikTok? I know you like TikTok. You've been skateboarding. You have the podcast. Is it just you who does the podcast or do you have a team or? No, it's just me and then uh, my producer, Anthony, who helps me with like editing it and audio and all of cool. that. We recorded at his house typically. And then my buddy Tom does the clips for it and the visuals cool. and that's it. It's a, it's pretty much a three man, three man team. That's awesome. Yeah. I think probably the worst part is editing because I hate fucking listening to myself talk. Like This is going to be brutal to edit for me. Yeah, and I have no desire to learn how to do that. I'm happy to rely <laughs> on other people um, yeah. for that. So it's nice just all I have to do is show up, try and make it good, and then put it in their hands after that. Totally. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are some of the podcasts you like listening to that made you want to start one? Mm, you know, I, I don't listen to too many podcasts, but I think like, some of some of my favorites that I think are really great is like um, Rick Glassman has a podcast. Called oh, yeah. Take Your Shoes Off. And I think that it's like brilliant and he does such a great job editing and just making it like a unique podcast experience. And then um, Andrew Michon and Cole Hirsch have a podcast called Podcast But Outside. Cool. And I think that those are just like more it's hard for me to just like sit and listen to someone talk. I get really impatient and so they both have podcasts that are more like visual and like not as podcasty and more like youtube -y, almost yeah. like sketch kind of mm -hmm. so those are my faves do you like uh vloggers not particularly but yeah. i've been known to watch a couple vlogs if if it's something that i want to know about i'll watch it but i don't like keep up with i used to be obsessed with phil defranco oh yeah um, yeah i used to really love his podcast i feel like i was more or not podcast his vlogs but i feel like i was more into that in like middle school and like early in high school i've been uh i've been watching a lot of uh trisha paytas you know her Oh yeah. With my girlfriend and she's 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 a riot, man. She's, she's not trying to level. be funny, but she is so funny. It's crazy. She's definitely not trying. I don't think she's trying. Unless... I don't think so either. Yeah. I think it's she's all just, an accident. She's just eating like the worst shit in her like Rolls Royce and it's just an all pink Rolls Royce. I don't know. Her life is very weird. Yeah. 
and now I, I want her life. I'm, I'm going to admit it to you. I want post, her life. Post COVID, we're going to, that's our goal. <laughs> Trisha Paytas is my uh-huh. goal. Oh, man. Other than that, yeah, I've been, sorry. Um, YouTube is, just, I think, is such a great platform that I've been under using. Like, yeah. every, like every musician I know doesn't do shit with their YouTube. It's just like, go listen to us on Spotify and that's fine. But like, I don't know. I like, I like, it's really the comedians that have made me think like, oh, YouTube is where I should be focusing a lot of my energy on. Yeah. Well, it was just super important to me because I like grew up with YouTube and, you know, like I said, like I really enjoy podcasts or anything that's just like more visual. And so I like having that aspect to it. But I know some people are very much like audio only. I want to listen to it while I'm driving. So I'm like... Why not do both? Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yep. When when do you think you're going to start having guests? How soon can we? Um, I'm supposed to have a guest coming up on this next episode. So there should be, I have a couple lined up depending on if they're able to make it at the certain time or not. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll be happening soon. Do you have any anxiety about asking people? No, because I feel like most of the people I ask are people that I already talk to. So it's just kind of like, hey, if you're available, come do my podcast. Okay, yeah. Um, Yeah, I, I don't. My goal isn't to like have like the most famous or the coolest people. Like I just want to have people on that I'm fascinated by and who I think totally. are cool. Because then it's easy for me to like talk to them because I just want to like ask them random questions about themselves and or just have a conversation that i would normally have with them but Mm. for other people to see i i always get kind of freaked out like even if i know them and then most of the guests i've had are people i know like personally and i still get weirded out like do you think you could it gets easier though i think like (laughs) yeah i think like the longer i've been doing it the more natural it is but it definitely was like a little bit weirder at first because it's hard to be like this is my podcast. I just started it. It's yeah. really bare bones. There's not much, you know, <laughs> going on with it. There's not a lot of people who listen, but the more I do it and feel more comfortable with it and the more it grows, the more I'm like, I'm just going to shoot my shot with whoever and just yeah. see what works. Cause I don't mind totally. doing it solo. So it's like, if someone can't make it, it's. That's true. That's like, what's nice about being able to do it solo is that it's not always so guest reliant and you can yeah. just fucking do it. I think uh, the one of the funniest things I've been getting, it's like, oh, so-and-so isn't available. It's like, what are they doing? Yeah. Like, doing what? Yeah. Yeah, they just don't have the time. <laughs> like, what? Not I feel like it's though. hard, though, to be like, it's hard to agree to do something during lockdown because sometimes it's like, I feel like my mood fluctuates so much mm. during lockdown. And so it's like, I'll be asked to do something and I'm just like, I don't, I'm not feeling it like at all. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And it's, it's hard, but I don't know. I just figure I might as well just do whatever and just show up. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Now Who's the what? third participant. Oh, you're on here twice. Oh, uh, I broke the uh, microphone on my laptop. Damn. I know. And now I use my cell phone as a microphone and I, I replaced this image cause, uh, the webcam on my laptop is so shit. Yeah. So I have another, I have another camera going that will look Whoa. better. Whoa. Okay. I know. I you know. got all the different setups. It's, it's taken me kind of a while <laughs> to, to get it locked down. Um, you figured it out. I'm like on episode 30 something right now. So. Oh, exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's new. Very exciting. It's, the one thing I like about um, comedians and, and people like you guys is that you talk a lot and you guys are really great at talking. And then when you're like, oh, let's talk to a musician, they're just like aren't used to talking. Yeah. So they don't have shit to say ever. Yeah. And it's like, I hey, think- working. Yeah. It just takes time. I don't know. I feel like, and it's also, I feel like my mood is so dependent on how talkative I am. And yeah. that's. That can be frustrating because sometimes I'm like, you know, I have so much to say, stories, funny, ha, 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 ha. And then sometimes I'm just like, "Mm mm-hmm. Like, (laughs) my energy levels are so important to how I, like, react and respond and talk. But 
how do you feel? What's your energy level when you get on Omegle? I've been I loving only, your Omegle. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with Omegle. I only <laughs> go on when I feel like I'm in a good headspace and I can talk to people. And sometimes I think that I'm in a good place to like hold weird conversations. And as soon as I'm on, I'm like, actually, I'm not there. And then I'm, I'm like, okay. tired. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm going to end this now because it's not going to be good. And I know that like there's just no part in me that's going to like get the energy to recover. Yeah, I think it's hilarious, though. I think it's like. So I don't know, it could be so weird. I was obsessed yeah. with chat roulette when it first came out. Oh, yeah, same. I was, like, in middle school talking to weird, horny old men. <laughs> it got weird quick on that site. Yeah, but now it's been fun. Like, it's – it's it What's almost What's the difference feels... between I don't think there's Ch I don't think there's much of a difference between Omegle and Chat Roulette. I think Chat Roulette's definitely more geared towards horniness, and Omegle mm. has it kind of sprinkled in, but Omegle's more for, I think, like, people who just are, like, trying to talk. Mm. Um, but it's just been fun because that does feel kind of like I'm performing. Like a and show, it does yeah. give me like kind of a false sense of like entertainment. So, you know, I enjoy it and it's fun live streaming it to, you know, my followers and having yeah. them interact with me and the people that they're seeing because we're all having this experience of like, is this person crazy? Are they normal? <laughs> Do we like them? What are they talking about? Are they lying? Like, that's it's true. just really fun. It's such a roller coaster. That's so funny. Yeah, I think you meet such strange people, just like just like the road, really. Except yeah, in the comfort of your own home, you bring it. You're inviting the weirdos into your house. Totally. It kind of feels like crowd work a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. With an occasional penis, just every in once the crowd. in a while. You know, yeah. I don't mind it. I don't mind yeah. it. Yeah. That's true. Um, I gotta go though. I'm gonna yeah. see. I'm visiting a baby through a oh. window. They won't let me hold the baby or be near the baby, but I get to view the baby from a window, and I'm very excited about that. Oh well, well, thanks for thanks for being on. Thank if, you so uh, much for having me on. If people want to support Ali Mac, how do they do that? They can do that by following me on Instagram at not Ali Mac. Um, I also have a website, AliMakovsky.com. You'll figure out how to spell it. I have faith in you. Yeah. Um, and hopefully there might be some shirts still available. So check it out in case. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully the shirts are still available. And yeah. uh, well, thanks so much. Thanks. Good talking to you. Yeah. Nice talking to you too. Bye.